you know, when we have these ideas about how long grief lasts and it's like six weeks, six months, 18 months, all of this stuff. I'm like, grief lasts as long as love lasts. There's one thing. And the other thing is that the person stays dead, but the rest of the world ages. And what you're describing is something that parents whose children die experience all the time, right? That like, if your kid dies in sixth grade, well, when middle school graduation happens and all of your kids' classmates are graduating, you can't not notice that yours isn't, right? It doesn't make that absence, that feeling any better, but like this is something that we do because that connection is still there, right? Because that relationship is still there. Of course, you're imagining what he would look like at 32 now. Of course, you're imagining all of the life that he doesn't get to experience, right? Because there should have been a story that kept unfolding there and it didn't. So I think um, because this is a new experience for you, this is something new that's coming up. You're in year 11, right? Like, yeah, 11. So it's like that that bridge year where something often shifts for people. So I think one is putting a container around it, putting a, a perspective or a, or a, what's the word that I want? A relationship around it, right? For you to be able to say, oh, I'm doing something that is really natural and a part of a lot of people's grief is I'm imagining who he would be and it's making me missing a person he didn't get to become. Okay. Right. So just, just putting a name to it in that way, we haven't quite hit on our phrase yet for this, the way that you talked about for the rumination and the rehearsing, but it's like, oh, I'm doing something that really points to, um, he still exists, right? This relationship still exists. And there are new ways for his absence to show up for me. And I didn't think there were new ways for this to show up. Yeah. He's missing in new ways in all the ages he doesn't get to become. Ah, okay. I was uh, doing an interview with somebody and they, after I had done this keynote on stage where I tell the story of Matt's death, which I say exactly the same way on the stage every single time. And we sat down for a conversation and he goes, can you tell me the story of that day again? And I said, do you want the stage story or do you want the real story? And he goes, you have two different stories. I said, well, does that mean that part of you is avoidant? And I was like, bitch, please. <laughs> no, <laughs> there are parts of my own experience that are private to me and I have paid exquisite attention to myself and my grief, but there's never a tidy end point to it because we're always changing, right? Yeah. We are always evolving and growing. And because grief lasts as long as love lasts, there is still a, re a relationship there, a relatedness there. Of course, that grief is going to change. Of course, that relationship is going to surprise us in new ways, right? Because we are still here, still alive, still connected, and still changing. So 11 years later, 15 years later, any of those things, new, new, terrible, beautiful things cropping up in your, in your grief are not a sign that you, oh, I must not have done my grief work correctly because I'm still getting affected by it by a new, no, right? You are an evolving changing human being and your grief is evolving and changing. So to be able to take that breath and go, oh, right, I'm an evolving, changing human being. And this is a new part of grief that I haven't experienced yet. Right. I like that you are already reaching for tools that, you know, help by, you know, if things get bad, I reach for the, the B mysteries. I, would throw one more suggestion in there is that you don't have to wait for it to get bad. You can say, you know, night times tend to be rough for me. So I'm going to proactively get my book set up. I'm going to proactively get my tea set up, whatever that is. Like you don't have to wait for yourself to be in great pain to tend to yourself. You can just come to yourself with tenderness on an ordinary Tuesday. It's those two things, 
noticing what's happening and going, right, this is a normal expected yeah. thing, right? I'll you know shorten whatever I said to make it sound like you. And knowing that the evenings are hard, proactively set things up for yourself. 